Well, here we are with the last Urban Legends of Video Games. For those of you that were surprised by that statement, please go watch the announcement video. But the short version of that is that the series is going to be replaced by a better series with a wider scope next week. And Urban Legends videos may return here and there. Basically, there's nothing left to talk about. But if something came up, there may be a special here and there. Anyway, for now, this is our last legend, and once again, it has to do with Street Fighter. There were a lot of mysteries around Street Fighter, and the whole Sheng Long thing that I went over in a previous episode being an example of just one. Another mystery, one that I consider to be unsolved, is the identity of Q from Street Fighter 3. What is up with that guy? Is he this guy? From Ken's boat in Street Fighter 2? And he's not in the HD remake. Oh well, maybe one day we'll know. But let's talk about something we can get to the bottom of, namely M. Bison. Bison is a mysterious figure in his own right. He first appeared in Street Fighter II, The World Warrior, as the last boss, and later on in Championship Edition he was playable. He appears as both playable and as an occasional boss in the Alpha series, and is also a character in Street Fighter IV. He basically started out as a crime lord that held a fighting tournament to, uh, I don't know. I mean, step one, hold tournament. Step two, step three, profit. Later on in the Alpha games, Bison's story was fleshed out more and he was given a more supernatural origin. But the big mystery is his name, M. Bison. People have always wondered, what does the M stand for? There are loads of theories, but they're just that, theories. It's true that he refers to himself as Master Bison in Street Fighter Alpha 3, but he also refers to himself as Mighty Bison in Street Fighter 4. And really, those both sound like self-proclaimed titles, not actually a first name. In the Van Damme film, he was Major Bison, but I always wondered about that. If he's the despotic, militaristic leader of a small country, why wouldn't he call himself General Bison or President Bison? Well, to get to the bottom of it, it's interesting to note that his name was never intended to be M. Bison at all, but it was Vega. Vega, you've probably known as the long-haired, vain Spaniard with the mask and the claw. So by that logic, the character known as Vega was once known as M. Bison, right? Nope. He was known as Balrog. That's the boxer with anger management skills. He's M. Bison in Japan. A lot of people are aware of that, but it still causes confusion here and there, especially to those new to the series. One thing that's interesting is that in the Street Fighter tournament scene, they don't refer to these characters by name at all, as there are both American and Japanese players competing. They refer to them as Boxer, Claw, and Dictator. I'll let you figure out which is which. So why did they change the names around? Well, the story goes that Capcom was either threatened by or simply feared the threat of legal retaliation from none other than Mike Tyson, former heavyweight champion of the world and all-around intimidating figure. This is a guy who once claimed that his only strategy involved knocking his opponent out and that he would eat his opponent's children, so maybe it was best to avoid pissing him off. The boxer character, M. Bison, had a full name, Mike Bison, and he was an obvious parody of Mike Tyson. Mike Bison was a former heavyweight champ who was kicked out of every boxing association for fighting dirty and accidentally killing an opponent in the ring. He then turned into hired muscle for the crime boss Vega. The story is actually true, though Tyson never actually threatened to sue anybody. And honestly, I doubt he would have. Say what you will about the guy, but he at the very least appears to have a sense of humor about himself. I mean, The Simpsons poked fun at him for years with the character Dredrick Tatum, who talks exactly like Mike Tyson, and similarly did Time in Jail, and released a hip-hop album, and has problems with anger. He also appeared in the comedy The Hangover as himself, in a role poking fun at his extravagant spending and penchant for keeping expensive pets such as tigers. But there's more to the story. You might wonder, if Mike Bison was just a little too close to Mike Tyson... Why didn't they just come up with a completely different name for the character? And if they switch the names with another character, why switch it three ways? Well, it actually comes from Capcom of America feeling that Vega was a sissy name for a last boss and needed a stronger name. Couple this with the fact that M. Bison was a no-go for the boxer and they switched things around, so the boxer is named Balrog, the last boss is named M. Bison, and the supposedly sissy name of Vega goes to the long-haired, effeminate guy obsessed with his own looks. 
It actually worked out pretty good, all things considered. But there's more to this than simply the name switch. If you're around my age, or especially if you're younger, you probably started with Street Fighter II and never played or even saw the first game. When I was a kid, me and my friends would play the arcade Street Fighter II at a local video store and wonder why none of us ever saw the original Street Fighter or even heard of it. Some people naturally assume that maybe it was only released in Japan. Well, if you've played the original Street Fighter, and by the way, the best way to get it is the PlayStation 2 Capcom Classics Collections Volume 2, you know why it wasn't around, because it was actually a pretty bad game. It has issues with collision detection and shoddy controls, and has a difficulty curve that goes from ridiculously easy to impossibly hard in no time flat. Plus, you could only play as Ryu, or Ken, if you were doing a two-player match. Most of the characters from Street Fighter weren't in Street Fighter 2. Ryu and Ken were, and the last boss Sagat, but everyone else was scrapped, though characters like Birdie, Eagle, Gen, and Adon would appear in later games. But what's interesting is, in the American stage, there's a black boxer named Mike. Could this be the same character? I mean, you have Mike, a boxer, and then have him appear in the sequel as Mike Bison, except for the American release, his name is Balrog. Clearly, it's the same character, right? I mean, they look a little bit different, but there was a leap in graphical quality and different artists worked on the game. Besides, Ryu's hair went from bright red to brown, and Bur when Birdie appeared in the Alpha games, he changed race completely. So it's not a stretch to wonder whether or not Mike and Balrog are the same, especially considering that Balrog could very well be a last name, meaning that his name could be Mike Balrog. Well, is it true? Capcom says no. They were always meant to be two separate characters. Some fans have theorized that the two fighters shown in the attract mode of Street Fighter II were Joe and Mike from the first game, and that Balrog is indeed a separate character. But some still insisted that Mike and Balrog are one and the same, pointing out that Capcom was likely still afraid of Mike Tyson. Well, it looks like all logic would point towards the fact that they are not the same character. After all, Capcom said so, Balrog has never been referred to as Mike, and they were just two characters that just had similar backgrounds and appearances. And the thought that the generic white guy and generic black guy in the intro to the second game were Joe and Mike makes sense, especially considering that Joe and Mike were the most generic, boring characters in the first place anyway. But it looks like the theorists were correct after all. On Capcom's official Japanese website last year, they hosted an interview with the director of Super Street Fighter IV asking questions about the game's characters and history. The very first question, are Mike and Mike Bison the same character? His answer? Yeah, they probably are. Now, this may be one rogue Capcom employee saying something that isn't the official opinion of the company, but no one has refuted it, and the interview remains on Capcom's Japanese website to this day. Maybe they all finally saw the hangover and realized Mike Tyson doesn't mind jokes about him. Well, that's it for Urban Legends of Video Gaming. I hope you all join me next week for my new series, Clearing Confusion, which will be very similar, but with a much broader scope. Urban legends may return in the future if there's a burning question to be answered, but for now, VMX out.